today's job is a little one. We've got this dead oak tree. And the topic that I want to talk about, there, the sun's right behind my head there. The topic I want to talk about is what causes some of these problems. And I'm going to talk about raising the grade on trees and how that affects them. This little uh, live oak here is stone dead. And you can see it is cracked and ready to fall apart. It's been dead for so long that this is a tree that would not have been a wise decision to climb because some of the branches up here, I was cutting them and they were just falling apart like powder. So I've got the, the small bucket truck out here and it's an easy job. But the client asked me why the tree is dying. And I started looking at these other trees around the property and uh, Jeff kind of made the observation that it really looks like the, the, the soil has been raised around these trees. So my comment was, you're gonna have to get them down to the natural flare. You wanna get it down to where the roots flare out and that's the natural grade. Because there's a huge difference between root wood and trunk wood and people don't realize that. They think you can pile dirt up around a tree and it'll just be fine. But some trees are very, very sensitive to that and they'll develop what's known as basal crown rot. If you get basal crown rot, you don't realize it until it's too late. And if the dirt's piled up around the base of the tree, you can't see what's going on. And one of the clues is that if you see a trunk that grows abruptly into the ground, like these are going more abruptly, uh, that's, that's a clue that, that you know, you're burying that flare because you know, when a tree grows naturally, the, the roots will come up right around the base and you've got sort of a, a, a basal crown flare. And, you know, not always, but you know, generally, that's a good indicator. And I don't know, what do you see there, Jeff? It looks kind of discolored uh, down, down here. This is all soft. The bark is beginning oh, yeah. to rot away. That's definitely the first sign of basal crown rot, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and it kind of travel, travels up the trunk, and that's what causes this discoloration. And this bark is actually probably pretty loosely attached now. Yeah. Uh, hmm. So what do you think? By pulling the dirt away, do you think that will remedy the problem, or do you think that the problem is there and it will continue to be bad? I have seen this work before. It can remedy the problem. It's uh, hard to tell, only, but it's uh, certainly worth a try. I see a little bit of, it looks like, like frass over here from mm -hmm. some insects. You see that? Right down here? Yes. Yeah. It, so, it might be the... Yeah, something working, it, working yeah. its way under the bark. Like the lace wing or something like that. Looks like it's still raised around here. We yeah. probably, probably need to do a little bit more excavating of the actual dirt. We pulled the right. we pulled the uh, uh, tan bark back. And a lot of people realize how important it is to put a mulch down on a tree so they'll mulch up all the way around the base of the tree. And that just uh, makes the basal crown rot problem uh, worse. So mulch is good, but don't bury the trunk. All right, now we uh, made the decision to use the small bucket, and this is why. This wood fractures so easily when it gets dry. It gets full of powder post beetles, and you don't realize it, but uh, a lot of times just the weight of the climber can cause these branches to break off. And you know, down low it's not so bad, but when you start getting up in the top part of the tree, I mean, these things, I could almost break them off with my hands. As a matter of fact, you know, the branches up to um, you know, two inches, they were coming off so easy that uh, definitely would have been a dangerous tree to climb. But a lot of guys do it. You know, they don't think twice about it. They, uh, they say dead trees, live trees, whatever, they, they're tough. Sometimes you gotta be smart. This is a close up showing the, the fractures that happened because of those little powder post beetles. If you look really closely there, you see that little white spot, the lower part of the, the screen right in the middle, that's a, a larva. There's another one over there. So they go all the way through. Now it's possible these might be the ambrosia beetles. Um, I'm not sitting here identifying them, but the, the insects that get into these 
pieces of wood when they die cause them to become very, very weak, very, very fast. All right, end of the job. Let's see what is going on here. Here looks like evidence of basal crown rot. You can see it's all the way over to here and it goes down into the ground. I'd have to excavate that to be sure, but it also looks like there's some over on this side and there's an old wound right here. You can see where the cambium has been growing up and around it. And there's a decay pocket here. Lots of dieback in the bark over on this side. The center is still reasonably sound, but from here over is starting to rot. A lot of that could be, you know, the age of the of the tree in terms of dieback. You know, it's been dead for a long time. But I'm going to guess, without excavating this this trunk, that this tree died as a result of basal crown rot from raising the soil. All right, all right, check this out, Jeff. Look at this. I dug it out, and all of a sudden it became very apparent. But yeah, you know, on the outside the wood is reasonably hard but inside I mean it just it just goes and goes and goes I can just keep going down there yeah. I and mean, it's got earthworms in the wood yeah and it's just it's working its way all the way down in there so one little area of compromise became the prominent um, prominent area that led to the rest of it so it doesn't take a whole lot of basal crown rot to affect the rest of the tree some going over here. It still feels pretty sound over here, but you can see all the discoloration. But just underneath it, this wood is, is like. You know, without digging, it's hard to know how far down uh, the main roots are. But yeah, well, what was kind of interesting is it was solid all the way along here, and then I took one chop with the axe and it went right in and it revealed itself. So it was a lot worse than we anticipated. I think a good six to twelve inches of maybe a good six to twelve inches of uh, dirt or fill was added at some point in the last dozen years or so. Yeah, no, I have to ask myself how bad are the rest of the trees. Hmm. So the client asked me to look at her other trees and see what I think. You know, that one looks like it not as bad. There's a little bit of a flare on that one. Let's see what we got over here. This is a valley oak, awfully close to the house. Um, definitely raised great around this one. And you don't know what's going on underneath there. Old wound right here. And a few other wounds to make way for the house. This one I would recommend doing some excavating. Oh, look at this one over here. This one, you can see the backside has been excavated for some reason, maybe an animal, but you can see it still goes into the ground. So I'm going to guess that this one has probably got at least a foot or more of dirt piled up around the base of it. And this is a tree she's quite proud of. And the whole property is full of oak trees. Everywhere you look, there's oak trees. And she said she bought the property because of the trees. I'll be back.